Hi, everyone. It's Alexander Fernandez with another edition of Video Games Real Talk. I am here today with a super amazing person, a person who basically has dedicated her time and her life towards helping better the video games industry by ensuring women are treated the way they should be treated. A good friend of mine, Joni. How are you doing, Joni? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for that. Well, no, I mean, it's true. I mean, I really admire what you're doing. I mean, honestly, it takes a lot to basically stand up and say, you know what, things got to change. And honestly, I really want to get into all of that. I want to talk about how you got here. I want to talk about basically why do you feel it's relevant that basically things change with the treatment of women, obviously minorities, uh, diversity in video games, but also just what you do and, and how you got here. So first, why don't you introduce yourself, Joni, and tell people what you do and what you're all about. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Joni. I'm the CEO at Women in Games International. Uh, so I took over as CEO just over a year ago now. I started as the CFO um, and really just kind of analyzing our business strategy and, and seeing where we could grow and how much more we could be doing. Uh, I was really excited to take over as CEO and just really rebuild our program's portfolio, uh, get our community active again. Uh, COVID really allowed us to kind of take that step back and go, wow, we've always done things in person. How can we reach our community on this new virtual scale and and really gave us a chance to to reach out more internationally as well. So really having that that footing in in Europe and in different time zones and um, helping us to to reach that broader audience on on that global scale that we had been you know pushing to reach already. But it was it was a really cool opportunity to find new ways to you know just amplify the voices of people who maybe otherwise couldn't afford to get to a conference or uh, couldn't. Um, necessarily have the time or the the you know the ability to otherwise be seen or be heard, and it, it created this really amazing uh, gateway for us to create new programs and and new workshops and um, new content that really spoke to people and, and helped empower women to empower themselves and and open that door for themselves. So this is amazing. I mean, can you tell our listeners, Women in Games International, what's the story? How did it start? And you know, bring us here, and of course. How did you get involved in all this? Absolutely. Um, so we started uh, in 2003 as a concept, uh, 2005 on paper is kind of how we always say it. Uh, we were really trying to find ways to celebrate and highlight women in the games industry who were making an impact. Uh, and when you're omitting a certain person or a certain, certain group of people from being celebrated, you end up omitting them from history. And uh, in 2005, we were seeing a lot of women who were working really hard and driving a lot of change and, and making a difference in the industry who weren't being highlighted. Uh, a lot of people with the, you know, the secondary title and the first person's getting all that recognition and credit. So Women in Games International created the, an award ceremony, which was an add-on to the GDC uh, event in San Francisco, the Game Developers Conference. And uh, that was really where we started. And then we grew so much from there uh, that we became our own separate conference. So we had a conference in Texas. And um, it was really to provide a safe and inclusive space for women to, to gather, learn, and network. And the conference was created to support women in the games industry. Uh, it featured mixed gender speaking panels, roundtable discussions, and then, of course, that impactful networking opportunities. So since our inception, we have grown into the largest worldwide community of professional women and allies in gaming, which is, which is huge. Um, also, since our inception, we have twice as many women in the professional side of the industry um, today. So, so we're definitely driving that change. Um, now we are very focused on creating workshops and programs to to help women, you know, learn the skills that they need to get in the door. So how I got here is uh, I started off, um, I grew up without very much. So uh, when my parents divorced, we were kind of starting over. We had four, my, I had three siblings, so four kids, and, and my mom was kind of, you know, running the ship. And uh, I, I grew up with this weird cap that I put on myself. And, and it was kind of like my career can never go past a certain point. But then I realized I put that cap on myself, you know, and it took a long time to get there. And so I always felt like I had to work twice as hard, do twice as much work, put in twice as many hours and not complain because I wanted to prove my worth. And I didn't know how to advocate for myself. And I didn't know how to set those boundaries. And I really started seeing that it wasn't just me. It seemed to be anybody who felt like they were trying to just prove that they belonged in that room, uh, belonged at that table, belonged in that piece of in that conversation. 
And um, it wasn't until I met somebody who looked like me, who um, also had a, a background similar to mine, where she actually grew up without much as well, but you couldn't tell because when she walked in the room, she owned the room. And in speaking with her, it made me realize that I had put that, you know, that glass ceiling on myself and um, I needed to find a way to really advocate for myself and, um, and make those changes. And so that was what really drew me to Wiki is we're building out our programs portfolio kind of on that idea of if only I had known X when I started my career, or if only I had known, you know, this specific piece of material when I was trying to get into C-suite and taking those experiences and those stories and sharing them with people who are currently going through those same situations and helping them just, you know, get themselves to that next level has really been the biggest focus that we've had um, with our current programs portfolio. This is super powerful. I mean, I come from a similar background. I come from a single mom home. I'm Hispanic. I grew up in Utah. Uh, couldn't be any more different. And basically, I think one of the things that, well, pretty much everything you said triggered me in a great mm -hmm. way, made me like, I remember all of this. But that idea that it isn't until you see someone who looks like you doing something that you begin to realize that you can do it too. How that role model, that that one conversation helps lead to self-reflection and introspection. And I'm really curious about this, Joni, because you know, that's it's super honest to realize that the one who's capping themselves is themselves, right? And, you know, do you remember the moment when you realized, like, wait a second? I can break through this or was it like a series of moments like <laughs> no i remember 100 yeah, so yeah. yeah. Do, do you mind sharing i'm sorry i'm sorry i don't know if that's too personal no 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 that's totally phenomenal that's great. i mean it's like how how like what was that like it, what happened so i was working at a tech company and uh this woman walked into the room and i i had seen her a few times and, and she seemed like one of those total boss babes like she owned the room every room she walked into she owned it and she walked in we were having a meeting she was supposed to be leading the meeting she walked in just as the meeting was supposed to start and she started and she didn't say, oh, you know, are we waiting on anyone or, oh, she owned the room. She said, this is the time that I have slotted for this meeting. I will answer the questions during this meeting. Here's the presentation for all the information that you need. And then she left and she was like, okay, and that's the time I have slotted for this meeting. And now I have another meeting I have to get to. And she walked out and we were like, that was incredible. Everybody had a chance to ask their questions. Everybody had a chance to, you know, like we were just blown away. Everyone was just, she owned that room. And I was like, oh, she's amazing, right? And I was just so taken back. And I was um, I was talking to a coworker and I was like, I just, I love this girl. She's amazing. She's so strong. She's so powerful. She's not rude, but she's aggressive. Like she, you know, she says what she wants to say and she gets what she wants. And she like, she works hard to get there. She's constantly putting in hours. I've seen her, you know, there a long time. Uh, when I got there early and when I left late, she was still there working and I was just like, wow, you know, like I want to, I want to learn from this person. I want to be like this person. And my coworker encouraged me to, you know, go talk to her, let her be your mentor, you know, ask her, ask her advice. Don't, don't make it a weird thing. Cause she's obviously very stressed. She has a lot on her plate, but uh, go talk to her and just, just kind of get a perspective from her. And uh, as I was talking to her, I, I was in the bathroom <laughs> at my tech company and I said, oh, hey, cause I'm trying to figure out how to approach her. You know, I was like, I just want to say you, you really killed that meeting. Uh, you were amazing. And I just really, respect and look up to you. And I, I think you're, you know, just incredible. And I, I want to be you when I grow up, you know, like that kind of a little speech. And, yeah. and she looked at me and she was just like, thank you so much. Like, that's incredible. Like, you know, you look up to your heroes and you think they already know that they're amazing. And she was genuinely touched that I had said something so kind and so, so empowering to her, you know? And, um, she said something about, you know, it's hard sometimes to walk into a room and own it when you grew up with nothing. And I just looked at her like, what are you talking about? There's no way you didn't grow up like with, you know, a golden spoon. And and she and we really connected. So we went out to lunch and it, it was in that moment that I just looked at her like, you're a real human. Like, I thought you were just born a superhero. And um, 
so we went to lunch that day and as we were talking, she was sharing her story and, you know, she grew up very similar and she didn't have anything. And, you know, she said that college was her favorite time because nobody knew who she was and nobody could tell her who she was supposed to be. And that was so insightful because everybody constantly told me who I was going to be, who I was supposed to be because I was the trailer court kid, you know, and, and that was a cap. And that was, you rode a different bus because nobody else wanted their kids on the same bus as the trailer court kids. And uh, you had a certain, you know, mentality of walking into a room that everybody knew where you were from and who you were because of that. And it was a tiny town that I grew up into. And it was in that moment that I thought, okay, I can pretend to be somebody else at work and nobody knows where I grew up or where I came from. And she said, no, don't pretend to be somebody else. Be who you are. Take that grit and make it who you are, but make it an empowering thing that you know helps guide you and, and helps remember who where you came from and have that empathy. And it was so powerful to me that I didn't need to forget where I came from. I actually really, really needed to remember where I came from. And that's one of the things that I really bring back to Wiggy. We have a Get in the Game program, and it's focused on getting women who otherwise couldn't afford it to a games industry conference to network with the people they need to network with to build that community and build that you know, opportunity to get those jobs by having those connections. And we pay for flight, food per diem, we're working with Dress for Success for virtual consultations and an opportunity to get donated clothing. We cover every expense to make sure that you can get there and that you're comfortable once you're there. We do one-on-one -on -one coaching. We talk to you about how to make those networking connections, um, what conversations to have, how to make sure that you're actually using those relationships to build your, your career. And um, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity that, as I say it, people go, that's incredible, but I never would have thought of that because I never had that problem or I never... You know, I never thought it all the way through. Like you really have every single piece covered to make sure that it's an equal playing ground once they get to the conference for that networking. You know, the thing is, I, I love that story. I mean, you, I, I literally felt like I was in that bathroom when you're <laughs> telling it because it's the, the way she must have felt to be recognized, you know, because to the point, a lot of people think that just because you're successful, you know, you're successful. A lot of people don't realize you actually have no idea. You're just doing you. And that moment where you had the courage to approach her and interface with her and talk to her as a human being, I can imagine that must have meant a million things to her. Because that's that's saying, I see you. I know that you're here and I would love to be you. And I think that's that ties so well into what you and the mission of Wiggy, what you guys are doing, because it is effectively a mirror. It is a I visibly recognize the struggle and I know what you're going through and I want to help. And it's something that, you know, it's, it's for me as someone who is, uh, you know, obviously I, I grew up in a, a, a similar background and just basically had to struggle through what it was to see organizations like Wiggy that are out there caring enough to help and, you know, show and give guidance. It means a lot. And I think this is something that, you know, ultimately in the end, when, when I look at basically the video games industry, and I really want to understand this from you, you know, you went from a tech company and then you end up in, a, in in games, and I want to bridge over here because do you believe tech has the same issues that games have, or is it games just has it like a thousand times worse? Like, how do you bridge that part right there? You know, how do you see that? I see tech as having a similar issue, but there have been more women in tech that have created, you know, huge strides. So you look at, you know, Anita Borg, who there's just there's so many women who have made significant strides within technology and are recognized as such and yes it's years later and in some cases unfortunately you know it's it's after they've passed or or once a movie is finally made about them because they they have made such amazing progress um hidden figures you didn't maybe know about those women until there was a movie that was made to recognize and um really showcase everything Very that true. they had done uh but within games it's not I would say not as much yet. There's just not not that type of recognition yet. There are some amazing women who have in the past and who are currently driving significant and amazing change. I think esports is another section that is it's still it's still young and so it's almost like we're still building the identity of of what the industry is and so sometimes it, that immaturity of the industry sort of empowers and enables not the best uh, thinking and not the, it's almost like 
I want to see what this person is doing so I can see how to move forward with my space. And when you see something, that is representation. So if that the thing that you're seeing is not positive or maybe not empowering to a specific group of people, do you replicate it or or do you find a way to make it stop? And it's hard sometimes, especially when someone's in a place of power, to sit, stand up and say, hey, that's not right or hey, that's not what should be happening. So we are working with companies and individuals to just really try to reset that norm and make sure that we're normalizing diversity in the industry and um, in, in positive working environments. Uh, we really want to see Everybody from, you know, console to mobile to tabletop to esports, we want to see devs to marketing to finance and sales. We want women at every table and in every room and on every board making those decisions that impact not only gameplay, but character development and that inclusive representation. You know, are we suffering as an industry from a lack of maturity? I mean, I know we use the word maturity, but I wonder sometimes, is that really the word or is it the fact that we literally aren't educated enough to understand there's a certain behavior that you need to have. And, you know, I, I understand that, you know, the way I look at it, I'm like, look, you know, what's right. You know, what's wrong. You wouldn't treat someone this way or want to be treated this way. You know, we're not your educational institution, but for God's sakes, how do you not know this? You know, and that's, I mean, I'll tell you for me, I'm always shocked. You know, when I read the papers and I see the rags telling us, Oh, look, yet another video games company does something disgusting. It's like, I don't understand this. And so is it in the maturity or is it just the fact that no one got up and slapped the hell out of these people and said, <laughs> knock it off? You know, right. to use, you know, to be very frank, because, you know, and I can tell you, if I would have said half the stuff people have said at the dinner table, I'd be punched right in the face, straight up. That, that, that's what it is. So I don't understand. And, you know, I, I just wonder sometimes, I mean, how do you see it, Joni? I mean, what are we immature? I think people love drama and people love negative news. And so a lot of times the negative stories are the ones that are not only highlighted, but shared the most often. And unfortunately, that really normalizes the negative conversations. And so there are amazing studios, there are amazing you know groups out there, your specifically uh, group, and you are constantly promoting diversity. Um, you are you know constantly normalizing that it's it's not strange to have more than just, you know, one type of person in your team or uh, speaking on your behalf or uh, creating these conversations. And I think it's, you know, a lot of times the the companies that are that are having these issues that are getting highlighted, people just want to talk about the not great situations and the not great scenarios. I think it's an industry wide problem rather than one specific company's problem. But one specific company is going to get a lot more attention because they're a huge company, because they're successful, and maybe because people want to see them fall. Um, but there is definitely that conversation that needs to happen on why is this normal and why is this accepted and why is this getting swept under the rug instead of being like, talked about. Um, I think another big piece I know from my perspective is when you find a company you want to work with and you just want to be there so bad, you want to be part of that team, you want to be part of that culture, you want to be that part of that, you know, that community that they're creating. And you kind of let things slide and then when you let this one thing slide and then you let this next thing slide and then all of a sudden you're at this point where you're going, wait a second, and maybe the thing you finally snap on isn't even really the real problem. It was all of the things that were building up to that point. Uh, it's those, those are the conversations that it's, will you let this go? Why, why now is this a problem? And I think it's normalizing that behavior and not knowing when to set those boundaries that is really creating the problem. So from my perspective, I want to teach as many women and diverse people and, and non-binary people and just whoever is struggling right now, whoever is feeling like I need to take on all of this extra work or I need to take on these harassing comments or I need to just deal with the way my boss is treating me. I want to empower them to set those boundaries and to have those difficult conversations and to stand up for themselves and to recognize when it's time to walk away. Um, I know I struggle a lot with imposter syndrome and it's hard being in the space that I'm in because I'm like, I'm trying so hard to make a positive difference. And then I get these nasty emails or I get these comments or I get the, you know, and it's like, I'm, I'm working to stand up to you. And then I have to take a step back and think, okay, how am I going to stand up to this person? Because I now need to, you know, lead by example as well. So 
not saying something is just as powerful and just as loud as saying something. So um, I don't know if it's maturity or if it's a lack of understanding of where where the power really lies um, and making sure that everybody is standing up and being accountable for their own personal needs and their own personal boundaries and um, what that can lead to. It's really powerful to have somebody say no to you. It's really powerful to have somebody say this isn't right and have that conversation. And I like to think that if you have that conversation nine times out of 10, maybe something will actually change and make it a better situation. But you know, you do also have to know when it's time to walk away and when it's not the right situation for you to continue to fight or to continue to deal with. And we see a lot of um, uh, like, uh, oh, what are they called? Like studios where people are like, I'm so tired of the way you're trading me. I'm going to go start my own studio. Um, revenge studios, that's what we call them. So we have a lot of uh, women-led revenge studios, which we love because then they create the environment that they're looking for and they are normalizing how people should be treated at their studio. They're creating a new normal of, you know, not – overworking or um, respecting boundaries and, and having those conversations and, and creating this, uh, this idea that maybe the games industry can be super, super fun for everyone. And, and that's really, I think, what we're all striving for. You know, I, I, you nailed something that I think is extremely important is understanding how to be confrontational. And how to say that I don't take the slippery slope that leads to book burnings and mass gatherings. It's like this thing needs to stop. Are there tools that people can get from Wiggy or are, are there, do you offer anything that helps people understand signs or at least how to have a conversation that says, hey, listen, you know what? We need to just slow it down, you know? Is that stuff that people can come to Wiggy to find? And, and if so, where, how would they do that? Absolutely. So we are building out our one, three, five right now. So our one year, three year and five year strategy. Um, obviously, this this grant with Activision Blizzard is huge. And we also have a really big sponsorship. And we Congratulations have Congratulations um, on that, by the way. So that much. is like, like, seriously, the biggest thing I ever read. I so know. Amazing. Me too. I mean, amazing. Congrats yeah. to all of you. Amazing work. Thank you so much. Uh, we also were just the September charity of the month for Humble Bundle. And we got a, a large donation from them as well. Um, so we are really putting that money to use. I think growing up poor has really been an amazing opportunity for me as a nonprofit person to really know how to stretch that dollar. <laughs> so uh, for for me, $100,000 is like a million dollars to somebody else. So oh, yeah, I'm, that's a lot I'm of excited money. to I mean, see. That's money. Yeah. That's real We're money. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so we next year have built out 26 separate programs to have people come and learn how to do the thing and how to empower themselves in in whatever that means. So um, I was saying earlier, you know, we're really an organization built on the idea of I wish I had known X when I was at this point in my career to get me to the next step. That's exactly what we're trying to provide to everybody and to provide to our community. So we have Wiggy Wednesdays. Um, every Wednesday we have new content. We have some uh, power leveling is on Zoom so that we can create the very safe uh very closed off environment where you can ask your personal questions anonymously. You can sign in anonymously. You can have everything in there. We have very strong moderation to make sure that the conversations stay positive. Um, but it's really focused on giving people that safe space to ask questions. It's not recorded. It's not on Twitch. It's not, there's no extra outside feedback. It's only the people in that space trying to learn and trying to understand. The only people you will see are the, you know, the panelists and the person from Wiggy who's moderating it. And, um, it's very much intended to create that that closed off safe space. Then we also have open world dialogue where we talk with our Twitch community. We are sparking conversations with everyone. We want to get everybody's feedback, and and that one is a lot more you know in your face and public facing and 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 creating that conversation. Um, beyond that, we have our podcast. We have workshops. We have our stat boost program, which uh, the last one we just did focused on self advocacy. Um, talked about setting boundaries, actionable allyship, um, just really having those those pieces that help you empower yourself, but also make sure that you're empowering those around you and, and having that representation of this is this is what I want to see. And so this is what I'm going to be. And this is what I'm going to, you know, not going to take and what I will take. So uh, having those those, again, difficult conversations is definitely 
something that we see is very important. Um, we did do our first ever Stat Boost program, which we were very excited about in person. Uh, we have been doing it virtually, which is very cheap for us, which is nice. But now that we are back to in person, um, really making sure that we had people getting in front of people at these networking events and coaching them, mentoring them, talking about, you know, specific goals and setting that accountability as well as, you know, okay, now that you know, go get five business cards today and and come back and tell me how it went. And then crafting those emails, crafting those posts on social media to let people know that you're there driving that awareness. And uh, we had a success rate of 50% of all of our participants were offered a full-time job within two weeks of close of that program, which is astronomical. It's so amazing. Really driving that change. Super amazing. Yeah. And then we also have our mentorship program, which we're launching next year. It's a 30-day mentorship program, and it's actually two different programs. One program where we focus on training the mentors on how to be mentors, and then the 30-day program focused on the mentees and having that mentorship Monday where you check in with each other, um, different AMAs, panels, workshops, really just guiding that conversation and that learning and creating that accountability. So uh, we have a lot that we're very excited to, to be launching next year. Um, a lot of new programs as well that we're still finalizing all the details on, but uh, we are very, very excited. Uh, right now, we do have a lot of content. We also love feedback. We would love to hear what you're facing right now that we could help you with. And so we're constantly reaching out to our community just trying to see what is it that you're stuck on? Um, what is it that you're not seeing? And then what is it that we can really drive that change and have those conversations? Uh, today, we actually have a, a burnout conversation about... Um, how to recognize and overcome burnout and how to just make sure you are setting those boundaries. So yeah, there's a lot going on and we're very excited to be that resource and we're very excited to continue to evolve and just move forward and find new ways to reach out to our community. I mean, you guys are doing a fantastic job and actually, I, you know, one of the things that I think is important for us to talk about is allyship. Because, you know, a lot of times people like to say, you know, they like to ask women like, what can we do to do a better job? It's like, and they, they're like as though they're saying, you should solve the problem. Well, we should together solve the problem. And I ask men this, like, well, what do you think you should do besides being a creep? Is there anything you can do to basically maybe not be creepy? And, you know, I say that as a man, very respectfully to them, but this is the real, this is the real thing. It's like, if no one taught you at home how to behave, then we need to basically talk about that in the workplace and in, in, in the industry, in a company. But for the men out there that are listening at uh, Joni that are like, you know what? I'm neither a creep nor am I a weirdo. I'm someone who wants to see other people succeed. I want to see women succeed. I want to be a part of the solution. What can we do? How can we help? Because honestly, this is also something that I think is really key that I know a lot of decent guys. Actually, I know tons of decent guys, especially in video games. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. And they may be too scared to ask even the simplest of questions to the point of what you said. They don't sometimes have the courage to step up and say something, but we know we need to. So what would you suggest for us, you know, for, for the, for the really, for the real men out there that really want to do something, what can we do? I wasn't sure if you're going to break into song there. That was, that was really great. Um, I know, yeah. right. It was like, I was so close there. Know. You know, I was just, I was about to hit some bars, but I stopped. Oh, maybe next time, maybe next time. Um, so we are actually developing a, an actionable allyship uh, workshop. And we are, that is something that we really want to promote because we do get that question a lot. And to be completely honest with you, I hate the response of pretend like it's your wife or your daughter or your girlfriend. And, and what would you do? Okay, first of all, not everybody's straight. So like that doesn't always work. Um, maybe daughter, but not always. Um, and by the way, could you just pretend like it was you? Why Why does it have to be a female? Why can't it be an equal, separate person? So I always say, pretend like it's you in that situation. What would you say? What Very would true. you want someone else to say? What would you do if somebody walked up to you, male or female or non-binary, I don't care who it is, if somebody walked up to you and said that to you, what would you want someone else to say or what would you say yourself? Because it might be as a cis white male, you hold more perceived power than like you realize. And we talked about earlier, you know, when you're successful or when you're doing something amazing, other people might see that you just think you should just know that you should just know that you're in a great place. You're being successful or you, or that you hold that power. But if you 
if you have that ability to be the one to stand up and say, no, it's also really powerful for me to speak on someone else's behalf to say, hey, they're not being overly sensitive. They're not, you know, overreacting. That was messed up. And so I try to take the person's lead. To, I'm a people watcher. If the person looks uncomfortable, I will step in without even thinking twice. If the person looks like they're teasing, you know, like that's a different conversation. Um, so I know different people have different relationships and that's kind of a cop out people like to hide behind. But if someone genuinely seems uncomfortable, or if a comment is persistent and not well received and not accepted, be the person to stand up and say something or have that conversation. And you don't have to publicly embarrass someone um, to get that clout that you stood up for so-and-so. You can have a conversation with that person separately and at a different time behind closed doors if you need to and just say, hey, this just happened. Can you reevaluate what it is that you just did or you just said? Because this is what it looked like to me. Maybe not cool. Maybe let's have that conversation. And it's really about having those those difficult conversations, maybe following up with the person who was affected just to make sure that they are okay mentally. And, you know, maybe, maybe you misperceived it. Maybe you were having a bad day and you took it on as being worse than it was, but let them have that feedback and that outlet and also let them know that you saw it. You saw what just happened and you didn't agree with it because that's really powerful too for someone to say, hey, this is wrong and to say it to you when it's happening, it's wrong. And I I did talk to them or I did approach them or um, if you, maybe if you need a witness because it was that bad, I saw it, I'm here, I'm an ally. Make sure that you are really speaking to you know, what is it that you would want if it was you rather than if it was someone else that you can relate them to, if that makes sense? No, it makes total sense. And I think that really starts off with one, understanding what you believe in and who you are as a person, two, understanding you wouldn't like it if it was you, and three, having the courage to open your mouth and to say, hey, knock it off. I think one of the biggest things that I've seen with people, especially in our industry, is that there is a perceived belief that someone has power like it's the publisher it's it's the head of development it's the marketer it's it's always someone who has power the reality is no one has power they have the power that you give them and the reality is is that if you see someone doing something that's inappropriate and wrong you open your mouth and you say something that is kind of just common sense but what i've realized over time is that people don't believe they can, that they don't have the power to do something or that they believe somehow it will put them in a position that's negative. There is no negative position with doing what's right. I truly believe that. And you know what? For everyone out there that might think I'm wrong, that's fine. I'll continue to do what's right. And I think really in the end of the day for allyship and something, Joni, that I've noticed, especially with this conversation becoming so public, you know, because we have seen the press. We have heard the stories. I've been in this business for 20 years and I swear the stories are the exact same stories from 2001. And I'm like, can we please get past this? The only way through this is to have these allyship conversations, to have an understanding of respect, to understand you treat people well and you treat them as you want to be treated. You know, and I hate to be so uh, quaint about it, but I, I, I mean, the golden rule is there for a reason. I mean, honestly, it's been there for what thousands of years, man. I don't understand why people don't get this, you know, but okay, it, it is what it is. Uh, but I'm so happy to see Wiggy pushing it through. And this this million dollars that you received, that the, the organization received, like seriously, blows my mind. First, that this happened and B, that, you know, it was in such a great cause and how did you feel about this? I mean, I, I really want people to understand that you it's hard to get money as a nonprofit. Let's just be honest. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, let alone in video games. So, I mean, let's let's go ahead and kind of put that in context. So, what was it like when you found out? Like, and and how did it come about? Yeah, oh no, we were so excited. Um, and and there's still a lot that we can't yet talk about, which is which is, you know, for the years. Um, but um we were we were so blown away. It was it was amazing timing because I've been working on our, uh, with my team, I've been working on, you know, our one, three and five year strategy. And so really defining where we want to go, you know, where we started so that we can, 
you know, bridge where we are right now and where we want to be in the next year, next three years, next five years. And we kind of had this walk, uh, what do we call it? We called it the crawl, the walk and the run model. And each model was like, we could do this many programs with this many people. If we ask this many people to volunteer and we can get this kind of an ROI on it. And when we got the call with about the grant, we we kind of wiped everything and we created a sprint model. And so now we're in the sprint model. We don't have to crawl. We don't have to walk. We don't have to run. We are sprinting. And, and we are, yes, yeah, so we got a car. <laughs> got a car, yeah. got a Ferrari. And it's a Tesla and it drives itself so we can get everything yeah. else done while nice. we're getting there. Um, and so we are building on a team. We are, you know, that we can actually pay instead of asking people to do stuff for free. That's a huge thing for us is, you know, normalizing getting paid for speaking. So in 2021, one of the biggest things that we did is we um, we asked people to join our Wiggy Wednesday. We asked people to join our panels and to give you know, talks and, and have these conversations and join our podcast. But every time we did, we paid them. We have a small honorarium. It's not huge. It's not amazing. But especially when you can join virtually, so there's no traveling costs, you're truly getting paid for your expertise and your time. And we feel like that is so important and such a such a huge piece, but also make sure that we are bringing in quality people to speak to our community. It's not just my best friend. It's, you know, somebody who really has that experience that in that top tier industry person who can bring back all of the expertise that they had, like when you were saying, you know, a couple years ago when there was already all of these things happening, how did you get from that point to this point? You're still here and you're killing it. What what did you do? Talk to my community, help empower them to, to do that as well and do it better and faster, right? That's the whole goal is to make the next generation the best generation. Um, and so I think the biggest thing from our perspective is just you know, getting this grant has really empowered us to not have to chase the dollars. We can chase the impact and, and really drive that change and empowering not only the individuals on how to apply for the job or how to stand up for themselves or how to, you know, have those difficult conversations, but also finding ways to work with the companies and, and what could you be, you know, how could you be a better ally or create that, um, create that job post that makes me want to apply or, you know, really taking a step back to look at their diversity at the top. If you have all the same people in your C-suite, you might be de deterring other people from applying to that job because either A, they don't see themselves, so they don't think that you see them, or, you know, B, it's just that's the environment that they're walking into and maybe they've had negative connotations with that type of environment. So they're not going to apply for that job because they don't think you're going to put them in that job, but also because they don't feel comfortable being in that job or in that space. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing is, is with this grant, it's not only like feeling seen, but it's feeling super empowered that we can now really focus on that, that bigger picture of, of creating quality content that we can share it with our community. You said something that I want to jump in on. If, if I'm running a company right now, which I am, but let's say for the other people out there that are listening here saying, okay, you know what? I'm an ally. I want to be in on this, but I want to make a difference in my own organization. You know, is this a case of just, you know, promote whoever I find or what, what, what is that realistically? You know, what oh, would no. you advise me? Yeah, no, that's the worst. So checking that diversity box and then walking away is setting that person up for failure. Um, checking that diversity box at the bottom rung and then walking away is is not creating an inclusive environment. And that's what we're seeing a lot is people are hiring at the bottom rung, they're checking the diversity box, and then when the people quit because they're not listened to, they're not being included in conversations, they're not um, being included in, in camaraderie, you know, or team building, anything. And then they quit. They go, well, we hired a this person, but then this person quit. So I guess it's just that this person doesn't belong here. This person just whatever. Okay. First of all, we're out there. So don't tell me you can't find enough female candidates. Like that to me is the first cop out. The second is we hired them, but then they left. Did they have a clear line of trajectory to get to the next stage of their career? Did they have regular one-on-ones with their manager where they discussed goals? Can you show me meeting notes from those conversations to tell me that A, you listened and B, you were actually setting expectations and goals? Um, where where were you posting that job? Where were you, if you, you can't find enough candidates, where is it that you were promoting that, that job posting? Um, 
And a lot of people say, oh, we were promoting it within our community and our community is very focused on our game and that's all we want are people who are very interested in our game. So that's why we posted it in our community. Okay, well, what does your community look like? Is it toxic? Do you have, you know, maybe a separate community where the women go to feel safer than, you know, the aggressive, the super aggro community? Because you might actually have multiple communities and not realize it. Um there's there's so many things that we can reach out and just reword the job description. We can, you know, we can help you when you're when you have your hiring team. Is it all the same people on your hiring team? How much diversity do you have within your hiring team? Um, when you have, you know, these outreach opportunities, who is it that's speaking on your behalf for these outreach opportunities? And really making sure that you are showing clearly what it is that you want in your organization. So no, don't just hire someone because they check that box. Don't just promote someone because they are a specific group. We want to see the best, most qualified candidates, but there are so many amazing qualified candidates who are beyond just that that one specific segment or group. So if you can't find those people, please reach out to us. We can help you find those people. We can connect you. We also have a no woman, no panel policy. If you don't have a woman on your at your conference speaking, we won't help support your, your panel. We won't help support your conference. We know these people. We can help introduce you to these people. We want you to see these people and we want you to include these people, not just hire them to hire them, but hire them to learn from them. You can reach so many more markets if you have somebody from that specific demographic or that specific market. Um, it just makes more sense because they can relate to it. They understand different nuances that you maybe didn't see or um, you were too nervous to touch because because maybe it was a, a, a specific thing that was also seen as a specifically like a, maybe it was seen as a negative piece of that culture. And so you weren't sure how to address it. If you have somebody who has that background, they can help guide that conversation. So Making sure that the people at the table are the right people at the table is is the very first step to reaching so many new markets and so many new consumers and so many new customers and, and really building out your community, both your internal team and your, your customer base. I mean, I can see this as a new consultancy arm of Wiggy because I can imagine that there are tons of businesses that would be like, listen, game developers or otherwise being like, look, I need help. I need resources. Wiggy, please help me. And Wiggy can be like, yes, we have consultants ready to help you. Because that, that's just it. I mean, I, I, you, you succinctly described exactly the biggest BS answer of, hey, I did my best. I, I once called someone in here. It's like, that doesn't work. And it's not at the bottom of the rung. It's every level in the organization, from the top to the bottom and vice versa. Every level needs to have someone that is reflective of the community and the world we live in today. And I think this is something that, honestly, as I look towards uh, Wiggy in the future, I'm so excited to see that all of this material, all of these actions that the organization is taking to support and grow understanding and help cultivate a new generation of effective leaders, that that is exactly something that Wiggy really, you, you're excelling. And under your leadership, Joni, honestly, fantastic that this is all happening. So... If my audience and the people that are out there listening, our audience, community, want to basically donate, contribute, how can they? Do they send checks? Is there a Venmo? Like, what do they, how do we donate? How do you basically, how do we give you money? That's basically what I want to ask. How do we do this? I should probably set up a Venmo. I haven't done that yet. Um, so we have a donate button on our webpage. Um, we do have a, a PayPal page that allows us to accept donations and it is um, like fee free. So so we actually get your full donated amount. Um, we have a Tiltify, Tiltify page. Um, we also have um, a Streamlabs page. And so there's, there's an opportunity to donate. If you check out our donate page on our website, um, it's kind of, you know, if you shop on Amazon, we would love to be your nonprofit. Uh, and then we've had a lot of people, especially with the, the recent news, but even just as we were building out our, our programs and our content, we've had so many people, amazing people reach out and just say, hey, I want to volunteer. I want to give back. I love what you're doing. How can I help? So we are currently setting up uh, a page to just say, hey, if you want to volunteer, 
sign up here and we will get all of your information, see exactly what you want to do. And then we will build you into our programs and build you into our content. Um, and we do have so many, you know, panels and speaking engagements and people reaching out to ask me, you know, I need this person for this specific panel, somebody who has this expertise or, you know, somebody who has this background. And if I have all of that data together, then that is definitely um, a huge piece that we can, we can start promoting people. Tell me if you want to speak. I'm constantly reaching out to people. I'm like, I heard you on this panel and you were amazing. And this other guy needs somebody for a panel. So you want to come on over here and, um, and just kind of making that introduction is, is one of my favorite things, connecting people and just making sure that, you know, everybody sees everybody else. So, um, absolutely. We will take your money. We also really appreciate your time. So, uh, any, any ideas you have, if you have an issue that you, you know, this is what I wish I had known when I was getting into this part of my career, please let me know because I would love to make sure that we have that covered in our content. Or if you want to speak on it, we can make sure that we have, you know, that, that panel or that opportunity. We just want to amplify as many voices as possible. So, um, very excited to, to get so many people involved and, and keep coming. Joni, how can we reach out? How can, uh, how can everyone out in the listening, how can we, where, where can we get your social channels? How do we reach you? So we have a weekly newsletter. Um, if you subscribe to our Wiggy weekly newsletter, you'll receive industry highlights and job opportunities straight to your inbox. Uh, just head on over to getwiggy.com and there's a subscribe now at the very bottom of every single page. Uh, you can join our global community of women and allies on social media using at getwiggy for all platforms. And you can check out our programs and events pages on getwiggy.com for updates on how to join us for future panels and streams and networking events and conferences. Uh, and if you have anything very specific Specific info at GetWiggy is our general mailbox, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And um, we're just excited to hear you and to continue to grow that that community of women and allies. Joni, it was so great having you. I really appreciate your time coming on to Video Games Real Talk and explaining to us what Wiggy's doing. And it's an exciting mission. It's a necessary mission. All the success and all the best to everyone out there making this happen. And honestly, your continued leadership so happy and we will have you on here again because we definitely want to keep following the mission and see what else what develops looking forward to everything thanks for coming absolutely thank you so much for having me everyone thanks again for listening to this episode this week of video games real talk you can follow us at videogamesrealtalk.com at starve up on twitter or at vgrt a lot more coming down this pipeline we can't wait to showcase and share with you all the stuff we have in store for you. Thanks again to Joni and the people at Wiggy for coming on in there and obviously sharing with us. We'll see you all soon. Thanks.